Hello everyone, I'm Will from the Prince George's County Memorial Library System, and thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, we're going to be making a summer salad recipe. Uh, this is from chef and food blogger, Jessica Merchant. She had the food blog, How Sweet Eats, and turned that into a best-selling cookbook, and now series of cookbooks. Uh, the first of which is called How Delish, and it's available at the Prince George's County Memorial Library System for you to check out. Uh, so this recipe is actually one that is coming from her blog, um, and I like this recipe because it uses maybe some non-traditional salad ingredients, or uses salad ingredients in a sort of new, fresh way, and it's kind of perfect for a summer day, either just for, you know, a small main for for yourself or you know something nice to to share with others so uh, we're going to be making her uh, blueberry cucumber summer salad with creamy balsamic vinaigrette um, pretty straightforward recipe a lot of just assembling ingredients uh, but it does have some cool flares throughout so I think this is a good one to demonstrate and also a good one to make for friends and family. So let's get started. The first step is gonna to be to place a nonstick skillet, or in my case, saucepan over medium heat. We're gonna to add to the saucepan two thirds a cup of sliced almonds and three tablespoons of sugar. We're gonna cook over medium heat for about eight minutes. Uh, keep your eyes on it. You want to be frequently, if not constantly, stirring and moving everything so it doesn't get burnt. And it's admittedly a longer process. It takes, it took me eight minutes this time, but I think it is a really nice technique to have to know about. And it creates a pretty amazing, toasty, crunchy, sweet final product that works well on the salad, but could be used elsewhere. So once your almonds look good, pull off the heat and put onto some parchment paper, spread them out, and we'll let them cool until we're ready to add them to the salad. We'll start building our salad with a bed of about eight cups of spring greens. You can choose your favorite, whether that's baby spinach, arugula, a spring mix, whatever you feel. Um, and then now the critical part, I think, is giving it a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper to season up those greens. And this is a step that I did not know about until fairly recently, but is kind of critical for making a nice salad, in my opinion. Some salads. Anyway, toss that all together and make sure that salt and pepper is well incorporated. Next, we're going to add baby cucumbers. So I have four baby cucumbers that I'm going to thinly slice. The original recipe calls for seedless. I couldn't find seedless, but I think that these small cucumbers worked well. They're nice, they have a lot of flavor. And honestly, I think if you use more and maybe less lettuce, you could have a maybe a bulkier salad uh, that would be good, more cucumber based, but um, yeah, heavy on the cucumbers, definitely sort of a critical piece to the salad. So really, really like that about the end product, but I'm gonna add those to the big bowl and move on to our green onion. So real simple, or real standard, take the roots off and then 
thinly slice and we're gonna use both the whites and the greens so just slice those down and add them to the bowl next we'll add our blueberries so we have one cup of fresh blueberries just sprinkle those on top very easy and we also have a quarter of a cup of grated parmesan and the final piece is to add the caramelized almonds that we worked so hard on earlier giving our salad that nice crunch at the top and we're gonna toss the top ingredients around a little bit i like to leave the greens where they are i think it's just sort of nicer for presentation and for serving but once you do that you have the salad built in its final form and we'll move on to do our dressing i think this one is nice to serve separate from the dressing because honestly it's pretty good without it but it is better with so let's do the creamy balsamic vinaigrette so we're going to start by adding our balsamic vinegar one quarter cup next we will put in one clove of minced garlic i added slightly more here in mine but that's a two taste thing uh, next is some heavy cream uh, we'll do two tablespoons and if you don't have cream or don't like cream um, i think this is definitely something that you can leave out and uh, it'll still be a very good dressing bit of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons, and some honey, two teaspoons as well. Okay, next I'm going to do some freshly ground pepper. solid pinch or two of kosher salt and I'm gonna whisk all that together whisk 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 and slowly add a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil uh, starting with just a little bit and then doing sort of a slow pour whisking the whole time to create an emulsification and finally add two tablespoons of fresh chives. I didn't have two tablespoons, that's probably like a teaspoon at that, but um, it's the best I could do. So there's our final creamy balsamic product. And this is a pretty solid dressing for multiple types of salads. So I'd say feel good about using this uh, on other things. So I'm gonna awkwardly plate and dress this here and we can take a look at our final plated salad. So pretty straightforward, pretty swift, easy to make, and really pretty good. All right, everyone, thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, hopefully you can make this recipe and enjoy it this summer. Um, you know, I think it's nice, light, good summer flavors, and a good one to share with other folks. So. Uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Um, check out the library's online catalog. We have lots of cookbooks, including a cookbook by the author of this recipe, Jessica Merchant. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Check out the online resources we have, our online catalog. Website is www.pgcmls.info. And thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome to Cooking with PGC MLS. Today we're making savory pork salad. You'll need the following ingredients. A clove of garlic, fresh ginger, two teaspoons olive oil, a half pound pork tenderloin, two teaspoons brown sugar, two teaspoons basil, two teaspoons reduced sodium soy sauce, 
one and a half teaspoons lime juice, one and a half teaspoons water, one teaspoon oregano, three cups of torn mixed salad greens, half cup grape tomatoes, half small red onion sliced, and a half small sweet yellow pepper. First, we're going to clear our work area and peel and mince our garlic. Although the recipe only calls for one clove, if you like garlic a lot, please feel free to use two or three cloves of garlic. My favorite method to de-skin the garlic is to smash it with the side of a knife, take the outside off, and then trim the stem part. You can also use a handheld garlic masher or give it a whirl in a food processor. This recipe also calls for fresh ginger. Ginger is really a lot more fragrant when it is fresh. I'm going to be using some ginger in um, a bottle, but um, if I did this again, I would use fresh ginger. So on the side to my left, I have my, hand, my pan heating up on medium high heat. And before adding the garlic and ginger to the pan, I'll be adding a tablespoon or two of olive oil. You can adjust the amount of oil to your liking as well. So here's my ginger in a bottle. It does have more moisture in it than fresh ginger would, so be careful if you're using bottled ginger. Uh, I did get a little bit of splattering from the oil because of the moisture in the garlic, so definitely be careful as you are sauteing your mixture. So just give that a little stir, and you want to turn down the heat a little bit And cover especially if there's any splatter. The next step will be to thinly slice your pork loin and again I have about a half pound here. A half pound loin will give you about six to eight slices depending on how thinly you slice them and make sure you get through the little tendon piece there, the like white stringy part. It tends to want to hold on. So these slices will be placed in the pan. We're basically going to pan fry these up. in the garlic and ginger mixture. And you see there's plenty of olive oil left. So spread the pork around the pan. In one layer. And you can see I try to spread them out as much as possible to get even heat. And then cover those up. Make sure you wash any surface that your pork has been on, including the knife, before you go on to prepare your vegetables. The next step is to chop and slice your onions. If you like your onions in smaller pieces, you can feel free to make them smaller slices or just little dices. And then the tomato and peppers get prepared as well. Then go ahead and check on your pork to make sure it is getting an even brown. They'll start to reduce in size and the liquid will start to come out into the rest of the ginger, pork, and oil mixture. Okay, 
you can see that one side has gotten a little nice golden brown. And throughout this process, we'll flip the pork a few times to ensure a really nice golden color. Now we'll start to make the sauce by mixing our brown sugar, oregano and basil. Fresh oregano and basil would definitely be better for this, but I didn't have any, so you can use whatever you have on hand. And then again, we're gonna check on the pork and see all those juices running out into the bottom of the pan. That will be the basis for our dressing slash sauce for the end when the salad comes together. Then we'll go back to our spice and sugar mix to add the lime juice. And I like to eyeball it. If you like to measure, that's, that's fine. A couple teaspoons will be good for the lime juice as well as the soy sauce. And you can use reduced sodium soy sauce or full sodium, either is fine depending on your, your tastes. But either way, the sodium will, the soy sauce will add an element of sodium to the dish. If you taste the sauce at some point after the pork is done and you think it needs a little bit more salt, feel free to add some then. So pork is done at around 160, 165 degrees. So if you have a thermometer to test the meat, that's fine. If not, you can just kind of keep it on there until there's no pink. Once you reach that temperature, take it off the heat. Keep the pan on though, because you'll be making the sauce next. Pour in your mixture. and let the sauce reduce for a few minutes. Because I used dry oregano and basil, it has a bit of that greeny characteristic, but if you use fresh leaf oregano and basil, you'll have a much greener sauce. So there is the sauce reducing. And in the meantime, I've also torn up my spinach leaves or if you have lettuce that's fine too and start preparing the salad you want to have a base of spinach or lettuce and all of your vegetables spread around and at this point I took the cooked pork and put it back in the sauce in the pan as it reduced even more you can choose to do that or not. It's sometimes good to have the sauce really cover the pork, but that is something you can choose to do. So if you're doing two salads, two servings, and you have six to eight pieces of pork in the pan, then you'll want about three or four pieces of pork in each salad. And then you can put half of the sauce on each. So now grab a spoon and drizzle the sauce and dressing over your salad. And of course the sauce will be a little bit warm. And you're ready to go. All the vibrant colors of summer with some really fresh flavors. Enjoy.